London Arena, and I've just seen the first practice of our U.S. ladies figure skating team. They're here. They were here for the opening ceremonies, and they marched in the parade. What was it like for you to march with all the athletes? Karen? Oh, well, it's just very exciting, and it's just great to um, get all together and to open um, the Olympics this way. It just was a thrill, and I'm just so happy to be here. And Jill? I just, I felt so proud just to be a part of it and just to be one of the many athletes, you know, to represent the United States. And I felt that um, just being there and being a part of it was a dream. And I felt satisfied just to be here. What did it mean for you, Debbie? Pretty much the same thing. Um, just, you know, you get chills when you're out there walking and people are cheering. I think the best part was that there were people just in the audience that would, you know, they would call your name and they'd say, Debbie, Debbie, good luck, go for the gold, and things like that, and it, it was just very special. Well, you all went back to Colorado and continued your training. Have you changed anything since the uh, U.S. Nationals? I'll start with you, Debbie. <laughs> um, <laughs> just give some variety in here. Yeah. Um, we made some minor changes with the choreography, not really anything major, just mainly worked on consistency and things like that. Did you change anything, Jill? In my long, I changed my triple flip to the first move in my program. I just felt it, it would be a little bit more consistent that way, but um, besides that, you know, I've just done the same stuff, same hours, <laughs> everything. Karen, did you change anything? Um, yes, I, I changed a little bit of my program, and I had made some necessary changes, and I feel much better about them, and I just, I've been training very hard, and, and that's about it. It's just been always training really really good so. well it sounds like you girls are really busy back there in Colorado changing everything around well how do you feel at this point um, basically I feel pretty confident with myself I feel good about myself I'm skating pretty much the best that I've ever skated and so going into this competition I can feel like okay this is the best you've ever looked so just go and do what you can do Jill, you ready for Same question. <laughs> um, I feel really good. I'm, I'm really happy that we went back to Colorado last week to really, you know, get the last couple of five days of hard work in, and you know, I, I feel ready, and I'm, I'm ready to start though now. Are you ready too? <laughs> yes, I am. I feel it's, it's getting time, and and it's the waiting is the hardest part, but I just feel I'm happy to be here, and it's just great. I'm just, it's, it's going to be great to be getting started. Well, good. Well, good luck to all of you, and thank you very much for taking the time after the practice. Now back to you, Keith. Following her victory, the Hamill cut hairstyle became a household word. Everybody had one. Entering the game, she had never won a world championship, interestingly, but her best ever performance gave her the gold medal that night, and by a good margin. And there was a haircut that launched a thousand beauty shops. Today, Dorothy has a very busy dance card as a professional skater. Recently, she was honored at a tribute to Dorothy Hamill in Lausanne, Switzerland. A lot of great Olympians who have followed in her footsteps joined her on stage to celebrate her great career. Tribute to Dorothy Hamill in Lausanne. To see you as always. You nice look to see you, Jim. And uh, your personal rainbow is in pretty bright colors these days, isn't it? I have no complaints. I'm as happy as I can, as I've ever been. I must say. That's wonderful. I like. Yeah. Now, when you won. You did not really have the kind of head-to-head -head confrontation that uh, Katarina and Debbie are going to have tomorrow night. On the other hand, uh, you had never won a world championship. Both of them had that behind them. Right. It was also the first time that the short program was included in the Olympics. So okay. you had your share of tension. Yeah. Why, why don't we take one of those disciplines at a time? What does a skater feel like before and during the school figures, for example? During the school figures was always the worst time for me. I remember before blood doping or before I was at the highest level in order to be blood doped people were or, or doped i should say yeah. there is no blood doping we all know that um my my coach used to try to give me valium because i would just shake out there mm -hmm. school figures were not my forte um in the olympics i did the best school figures in competition that i ever had and came second so i was lucky but um they were not known to be a <laughs> strong point in my skating and here was this new olympic situation event mm -hmm. the uh, short program how right. you feel about that i loved the short program because it, first of all it was short free <laughs> skating is is always where I, you know where i excelled and um it was the first one it was kind of exciting to see the competition really more focused on free skating the part that people really enjoy and that i enjoyed especially 
And tomorrow night, well, before oh. your free skating performance, how would you feel and how do you think they might feel tomorrow night? Oh, goodness. I'm sure every athlete, especially going in, trying to be a medal contender, feels the same. You know, it's, it's like going to your own execution. You, <laughs> you really are absolutely terrified. I broke down into tears just before going out on the ice after seeing some hometown uh, folk and you know realizing the pressure that was on me and i think that that was just the little bit i need needed of let down to be able to go out and skate as well as i did i guess sixty four thousand dollars who's going to win tomorrow night i knew you were going to ask me <laughs> of that course you did. i have no idea i wish i did hey if i did look at all the money i could make <laughs> do you think that that the fact that uh, Katarina won the short program could be a little handwriting on the wall. Well, it could be, but Debbie is such a strong competitor and technically just brilliant. And if they both make no mistakes, I wonder if, if arti artistry, which is where Katarina, I think, had the edge last night, may come into play there. But I'm not going to, I'm not betting on either of them because because uh, who knows? Okay. Neither could do it. Dorothy, I can remember when you were young and shy and kind of a tough interview. Yes. Times have changed, and congratulations on the way things are going in your life now. Thanks so much, Jim. Dorothy Hamill, we'll be back with bobsledding to win a gold medal in figure skating. After she won the gold, they called her the Sonia Henney of the 1950s. Today, Barbara Ann lives with her husband, Tom <laughs> King, in Chicago. Yeah. Who loves to ride horses. The the and now. the chancellor of two design academies. Very good at it. Barbara Ann Scott. Well, we're going to be going back to the bobsled competition, but right now Barbara Ann Scott is with us in our interview studio. Barbara, I'm trying to bring it back, but after you won the gold medal, your townspeople, as I recall, wanted to give you a convertible. Yellow, is, was, was that the color, I believe? It was a beautiful yellow a Buick beautiful convertible. beautiful yellow Buick. Right. And uh, Avery Brundage, who was then the height of the IOC, said, you can't do that, that makes you a pro. But I forget how it ended up. Did you ever get well, the car? No, I gave it, yes, eventually when I turned professional, Jim. <laughs> but I, at the time they gave it to me, I said, oh, but I want to go to the Olympics next year. I can't accept such a gift. And the mayor said, we cleared it with all the amateur associations. <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, people said Avery was so mean, but he wasn't. He said, right away no no and so I gave the car back to the city okay <laughs> the famous yellow convertible right. Barbara Ann you were the first to carry the Olympic torch uh, when it started on the road to to Calgary here it must have been quite an experience oh it was such a thrill and I, I felt so honored to be asked after all these years you know it was 40 years ago I was at the Olympics gym yeah. and to have Doesn't look it, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, aren't you kind? But it was a great honor and a great thrill to carry that torch. You know, it's almost sacred to an Olympic athlete, and to be that close to it was wonderful. Barbara, and what about tomorrow night? How do you see this competition? <gasps> Jim, well, you know, I have very definite opinions. For instance, I feel that skating should be beautiful and artistic, and that the skaters should look as if they're enjoying it. I think having to do these wretched triples and triple combinations, the the kids go out and they're all tense and tight and they don't look like they're enjoying it. They lose the flow, the beauty of skating. If you want to be a gymnast, go do your triple spins in the air. But double jumps prove you can do things, but you don't lose the flow and the beauty of skating. Now, last night I thought the Canadian girl, Elizabeth Manley, skated to perfection. She looked happy, she had flow, she was great, and the little Japanese girl. Um, Katerina, who I admire tremendously, did a lot of <clears throat> dancing on her toes, and was, but that wasn't really skating. And Debbie did a magnificent athletic program, but she was labored. I think the judging was quite correct. I know her, her instructor was um, uh, unhappy, but I feel that skating should still be a thing of beauty to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, in one word, who's going to win? Oh, the crystal ball. Who knows? I think it's whoever skates well tomorrow night, Jim. Okay. And they're all wonderful, wonderful athletes. Barbara Ann, thank you very, very much. Good to see you. Barbara thank Ann you Scott, too. who won the gold medal in 1956 at Cortina del Pizzo, Italy. She won the silver medal just behind another great American, Tenley Albright. Four years later, Carol competed again at the Olympics in Squaw Valley and went on to win a gold. And right now, she is at our affiliate in Cleveland. We're going to talk to her in just a moment. But after we talk to Carol, we'll be returning to the second and final run of the women's slalom competition. 
Well, Carol, let's see. We worked together as commentators back in 1964 at Innsbruck. You look exactly the same as you did then. Oh, thank you, Jim. You had quite a personal rivalry going head-to-head -head with Tenley Albright uh, in your days. Did you see any similarity between that rivalry and Katarina Witt against Debbie tomorrow night? I think so. Um, two skaters that are unlike in some ways, but in some ways very much alike. I mean, um, Katarina Witt is the defending champion, as Tenley Albright was. Uh, at that time, she was the defending world champion. And you said it the other night, it is very difficult to beat the champion. It's like boxing. You have to knock them out. You can't equal their performance. Mm -hmm. But you've got Katarina and Debbie. Tough, gutsy, bold, gregarious. Feminine, elegant, classy. They both have everything. And it's whoever skates the best tomorrow night. I'll tell you one place I wouldn't want to be tomorrow evening in that arena is when Debbie and Katarina skate their very best. I wouldn't want to be any of those nine judges because there's no way I would know what to do. And to an extent, it's comparing apples and oranges. When Barbara Ann Scott was on a little while ago, she regretted the fact, she said, that she thinks some of the artistry has gone out of it and some of the fun has gone out of skating because everybody has to do six or seven triple jumps, you know, to be, to be in the ball game. How, how do you feel about that? It's changed a lot since you skated. Well, I think maybe um, five, six years ago I would have felt that way, and I would agree with Barbara Ann. But now with seeing Debbie, Katarina, Elizabeth Manley, Jill Trenery, Karen Kadavy, and Midori Ito, I mean, the short program was so fabulous with such wonderful skating, everybody doing gorgeous triple jumps and still looking elegant and feminine. I think it's very difficult for me to say, sitting here now, that uh, the triple jump shouldn't stay and it's beginning to be too athletic. I mean, all those girls look beautiful. They did. What about cutting out school figures? Some people want to do that and it may happen. Well, you're asking me a very tricky question. You always put me on a spot, Jim. You That's always want me to get out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the aesthetic figure skater in me tells me that we should keep figures, definitely. It's part of the sport. And then now that I'm coaching, the other side of me says, well, figure skating really doesn't really need the compulsory school figures. It's because I have so many young skaters that I coach that are fabulous at the free skating. They don't even get a chance to make it to sectionals or to nationals because they're so low in the school figures. Okay. Some of them, I have a 10-year-old girl, she's lightweight, she can't see the circles. So I'm beginning to think that uh, so it maybe it's not a bad idea to have a little bit more of the emphasis on the free skating and double let's see what will happen huh? with the figures. Okay, Carol, in a word, the others have weaseled out of it so far. Who's going to win tomorrow night? Oh, don't you do that to me, there you Jim go McKay. Again. I All predicted right. four years ago that Katarina Vitt would win, and she did. But I'll tell you, I, I must agree with the other ladies. There is no way that I could call it for, for tomorrow evening. I mean, they're both so great. Okay, Carol. Thank you very much. Carol Heiss in Cleveland. Now we're going to move on to the second run. America's golden hope there was Tenley Albright from Massachusetts. She had won the silver medal in the 52 Winter Games. But less than two weeks before the 56 Olympics, she suffered a serious injury while practicing. Her father, who was a surgeon, came and patched her up. Despite the pain, Tenley continued training, defeated her arch rival of the time, Carol Heiss, to win the gold medal. And after her skating career, Tenley Albright, who is in our interview st studio now, emulated her father, became a practicing surgeon, which she is until this day. Tenley, it's very good to see you again, and uh, there's a similarity here. We have a young woman named Debbie Thomas, who is in pre-med studies at Stanford University, who hopes to become a physician, get her into sports medicine. Have you ever talked to her about the, the problems involved with doing both? had some wonderful talks with Debbie and seeing everything that's going on here and you know last night when even as she set foot on the ice even before her name was announced the place was just rocking everyone was so excited and cheering and shouting her name and to see the pressure and the way she's handled things makes Debbie just the sort of person we want to have in medicine well if you could sum it up briefly what'd you tell her about balancing pre-med and skating at the world well, level Debbie's the one who spoke about it um, to me first in fact she said that with what she was doing in that first year of Stanford with training and everything she said well I, it's something that I love doing but I wouldn't expect or ask of anybody else to try to do a schedule like this 
And I think what it shows is when it works, it works, and she's made it work. No question about that. What about the changes in the sport? We've been asking all of the former champions about that since you were skating. Are they good or bad? Well, there are some wonderful changes. When you think what the, our skaters, our strong team, I don't think we could have a stronger team with, with uh, Jill and Karen and Debbie. And there they are doing all those difficult triple jumps. And yet, when they do them, they're going right to the brink. And any second, the harmony of the entire program can be broken. So the pressure on them, how they can have the grace and the feeling they do in spite of that. And the other thing, how they can do those triple jumps near the end of their program, that's tough. They're tired then, and they have to have absolute precision, and they do it. When you started in the Olympics, Dick Button was the only human doing a triple jump. Quickly, I'm going to try again. Will you pick a winner for tomorrow night? If I close my eyes and try to picture everything that goes from right now until tomorrow night, I picture Debbie Thomas with that medal around her neck. Thank you very much. She You're can the do first it. one to go out on a limb. Thank you very much, Stanley. Wonderful to talk to you again. Tenley Albright, Olympic champion. We the bell, or Prima Donna is about to sing. Katarina, the champ. And Debbie, the challenger. Debbie, the fighter. Both in their final year of competition. Vitt skated first of the two. She aspires to the stage, and her costume and music were Broadway bound. had done her job well. The gauntlet had been thrown down to Debbie. The United States is your Debbie Thomas. Coach Alex McGowan sent Debbie out like a football coach just before kickoff. She had been nervous, grumpy at practice in the morning, had stomped off the ice. Had she left the tension behind her? I think I was just so excited that I did it under all the pressure. I was just really excited. I was having a blast because the audience was really with me for the whole thing. It was fun. I really wasn't that nervous, and I was a little bit nervous about not being nervous because usually I'm really scared before I go out, and I really have to just get mad almost to get rid of the nerves but i'm gonna try and do just like brian did we've so far along the way we've done everything exactly the same in this competition so i'm hoping that the same will result in the end at the end of the evening as they waited for the draw for saturday night skating order katarina had time to ponder the fact that debbie was now the leader and we pondered katarina up close and personal Vit of Calgary doesn't look much different on the ice than the Katarina Vit of Sarajevo in 84. But you, the audience, look different to her. She's aware of you now and likes it. I love skating much more than 84 because I don't see it really like only for sport. When I'm standing on the ice and I feel the audience and I feel the music, so it's much different than three years ago. I can 
express the music much more, and so I have much more fun on the ice. Katarina's a big star in her country, and big stars get to do things like tour Washington, D.C. Big stars get parties given for them by their country's ambassador to the U.S. And back home, big stars like Katarina get to give speeches to trade union congresses, while Eric Honecker, the head of state, applauds with the rest of the crowd. Big stars must sign autographs on anything that people ask them to. Because big stars in communist countries are made very aware that they have a responsibility to the people who watch them. I know there are so many people, they watch figure skating and they know me and maybe they were sitting at the night for the world. Here in Europe it was 3 o'clock in the morning and they were pushing the fingers, they crossed the fingers. Um, so I like it if they come to me and they ask for an autograph. The biggest star of her hometown is still old Karl Marx. But who knows, maybe one day there'll be a Katarina statue. For now, though, she must also play the role of a simple member of the proletariat, just one of the guys marching in the May Day Parade. That's okay, but she likes the spotlight, too. I started my career when I was 14, and with every year, I'm getting better and better. And more people know me, so it was easier for me to live with this. And now it isn't a problem for me or big things. Katarina Witt, socialist superstar. Then came the draw. Now, most skaters prefer to skate as late as possible in the order. It's a blind draw among the last six skaters. Debbie so would draw now first. The draw for the starting order. The skaters for starting positions 19 to 24. Commencing with uh, Debbie Thomas. Twenty-four. Debbie would skate last. Next, Katerina Vitt. Well, she drew position 20 early in the last group. So the scene is set for tomorrow night. 20. Katerina versus Debbie, and the issue is still in doubt. Very much in doubt. Seldom really has there been a contest as tight as this, as widely publicized as this, and I think tomorrow, tomorrow night you'll see as exciting as this. From first to fourth. Because of mistakes like that. Karen Kadevi of the United States skated with a temperature of 101, but still moved up from seventh to sixth with this performance. The temperature rose to 103. She had a skip practice yesterday, practiced this morning, feeling terrible, and will not decide whether to skate or not this evening until the warm-up period for her group. Olympic courage, Karen. Elizabeth Manley of Canada has had a turbulent career. Let's meet her up close and personal. subject of this drawing like? Well, she's pretty, regular features, a pleasant, quite peaceful face, really. Or is it? Elizabeth Manley thinks of herself differently as a fighter. I want to be remembered as someone just, just through my career on how well I did and how I kept fighting. I've always been known as a fighter in the sport. There's been the odd girl where it's just She's always been successful, and I've always been the type that's had to be a fighter. And I'm kind of hoping people will remember me in that Wait. In the early years, her career went up, but then it crashed in 1983 when she lost her place on Canada's world championship team. She left her coach and her mother, and then she had major financial problems. But in time, she came back home to mom in the city of Ottawa, where she likes to hang out quietly around the National Parliament building. I only live a couple blocks from Parliament Hill, and it's a great place for me to go and walk around, and I'm not bothered by people who recognize me because most of the people that hang around up there are tourists. I make sure that everything I'm doing is fine. It's something I don't want to do. Um, I enjoy skating, and I enjoy every everybody in the skating, I, and I try very hard to do that with my life outside of skating at the same time. Well, life outside skating is near now, but first, one last skating ambition remains. I want to prove to myself that I am one of the, the better skaters in the world and, and just 
retiring this year, I want to be able to retire on a good note instead of retiring saying, why didn't I ever get on that podium? On the comeback trail, Elizabeth was still aware that in past great occasions, she has had great troubles. Not Thursday night. She was terrific before the home crowd. This put her into third place, potentially the bronze medal position. It was a standing ovation. Backstage, Jill Trenery of the United States paced and paced and waited and waited. She would be the last to skate in this step two of the battle for the bronze medal. And then it was finally her turn. She was terrific. <laughs> this was her father, Bob, who had earlier told us he didn't really care whether Jill skated or not, but frankly, he'd rather have her home. This is the way he behaved during her performance. We had him isolated. 5 4, 5 then the marks. 5 7, 5 Not as good 7, as Coach Carlo Fossi on the right would have hoped. He was quite distressed, really. But there was a mistake. It came right here. Watch the landing. Instead of one foot, the left foot touches down. A serious flaw on her combination jump. She remained in fifth place then. And here are the standings coming to tonight. Thomas Vitt. Manley, Ivanova, Trenery, and then in sixth place, Karen Kadavy of the United States. everybody went to the TV there is a lot of interest yeah. in Debbie but let's talk about what happened today earlier not much <laughs> in her figure skating showdown with Katarina Vitt today both skaters took the ice at the same time for some light warm-up after two performances Thomas and the East German are in a virtual tie going into tonight's program they'll skate to the same music each knowing it may take perfection to win the gold at the Calgary game basically no holding back i really have to fight for this and the good thing is i know the audience is going to be with me all my friends are here and very supportive and i just i really want to put out a good performance and i think i'm capable of doing that 
Here's the menu from Calgary tonight. Ice rink with Debbie Thomas, the American who tonight will be trying to go for the gold medal in ladies' figure skating. She had one lesson with the great Mikhail Baryshnikov, and it was Baryshnikov who then suggested and got George de la Pena to work with her. It all was uh, arranged in the beginning by Aya Zanova, the former world champion. George is with us in our uh, interview story, uh, studio now. George, uh, how would you assess the progress that Debbie Thomas has made from wh when you started with her on the artistic side? Oh, the, the, the jump has been extraordinary. She's uh, opened up and uh, become the most wonderful performer. It seems also, though, just from looking at her from my inexpert eye, you, you have worked a lot with hand positions and all, all the graceful parts of this sport. She had the athleticism all along, right? Well, yes, uh, that she did, but I have to tell you, I didn't work on the hands. The hands came out of the emotional work that we uh -huh. did. So basically what you're seeing is very spontaneous. It's not choreographed. But you work with the head then, not just with the body. Well, when you're feeling the right things, your head seems to go in the right place. You know, this afternoon, uh, Alex McGowan, who obviously, <laughs> and on camera, was very displeased with her artistic impression mark the other night, said, uh, well, I don't know, if she's good enough for Baryshnikov, why isn't she good enough to the judges? What do you think of those marks? Well, um, that's a difficult question. I, I couldn't quibble with all of them. Uh, I thought they were a bit low, uh, although... Um, the program itself, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to get to that short program. So um, uh, the tones of the piece were uh, all genuine and fantastic, uh, but it could have had more color, in my opinion. Final quick question. Did you have any suggestions for her before tonight's performance? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, just be herself. Okay. Thank you very much, George. Appreciate your joining us. George Not De La Pena quite. of the American Ballet Theater. We're now going to withdraw. We were open at 4 o'clock. I went to see her at the village. She had temperature. She really couldn't almost stand up. But we postponed the decision at 6. We went back with the doctor of the American team and the team leader. At 6, she was definitely She couldn't get out of bed. Absolutely. She's uh, very heavy influenza and uh, she has temperature she can she vomit she cannot really absolutely compete but, um, we are all upset because it gets so close and uh, that she had to withdraw what a tremendous heartbreak uh, any what would be the future now what happened oh well i hope she gets better in few days and uh, she will come back to the Broadmoor, and uh, we will go to budapest hoping that she will do well in budapest well, I'm sure it's a heartbreak for you, too. Sir. Okay, well, thank, thank you very you. much, thank Carlo. Now, Jim? Tough break, then. That is confirmed for Karen Cadavy, Carlo Fossi, her coach, the most successful judge of female figure skaters in the world and one of America's great soccer fans, by the way. You know, when they're out there, they make it look so easy, you know, that uh, it looks like a very simple sport. It is extremely difficult. And the fear is always in their mind, really, of falling. And when they do fall in important competition, it has a great impact. And another fall. Near disaster has struck Janet Lane in the World Championships. That whole mindset can carry over for years and years and years after. I'm not good enough. Here I go again. I'm failing again, and I'm not good enough. Oh, oh, oh. I completely remember everything up until the fall, and then after the fall, I don't remember the end of the program. I remember nothing about that. Oh, Sometimes you feel humiliation or that you're letting the public down. I know that people are probably just sitting on the edge of their seat, so I hope this guy doesn't fall again. You just want to get off the ice. But you can't. Skaters have to pick themselves up and keep going. They have to learn to control the reactions because usually it's not the fall, but the reaction that's fatal. I think the most common thing that came to my mind was don't do it again. And that's the worst thing you can think about. You know, you have to push it. You have to push it out of your mind that you've made a mistake. Which is hard. You know, when you have three triples coming up and you've fallen once already and this is the Olympics and <laughs> just thinking about it makes me, makes me, um, you know, my stomach just tighten. To help him get back on the ice, Charlie Tickner turns to self-hypnosis. After that, he won his first of four national titles the following year. Now, Rosalind Sumner's, like countless other skaters, worked with a sports psychologist to train her to steal her mind against worrying about a fall. While many skaters use a visualization technique where they see themselves doing perfect programs, Elaine Zayak prepared herself to cope with the worst. She started to mentally go through it, but she actually walked. 
And she'd say, here I am getting ready for triple toe look, and bam, she's down. But she's up again. <laughs> a skater's reaction is frequently determined by their mindset going in. In the 1972 Olympics, Janet Lynn was our gold medal hopeful, and she was skating beautifully until... But to everyone's amazement, she got up smiling, and because she didn't let it disrupt her, she was able to win the free skating portion of the competition. But a year later at the World Championships, her first double axle. And 30 seconds later, another double axle. And another fall. I wanted to run off the ice and cry in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and why the difference? In the 72 Olympics, Janet's positive reaction stemmed from a deep personal belief. A very religious person, she felt God had given her talent, and she wanted to show his love while skating. If I had that attitude, it didn't bother me to fall, because God loves us even when we fail, and even when we fall. The other side of that is that if I tried to go onto the ice and beat someone, then I started being afraid of falling. Which is exactly what happened in 1973. In 1982, Elaine Zayak entered the national championships in Indianapolis as the champion. In the space of four minutes, she fell three times. She was still reliving these falls a month later at the world championships. Up at her hotel room, just hours before her performance, a hysterical Elaine told her coaches, I'm not going to skate. Why? Total fear. Remembering what had happened in Indianapolis. She said that she had gone for years and never missed. And now she knew she could miss, and she felt that she would miss again, and she just couldn't go through it. She said, if you love me, you will not make me do this. I said, I love you. We're going to try it one more time. How did they get Elaine on the ice that day? Well, in desperation, they brought an old and trusted friend up to her room. He sat on her bed and told her a story. He said, what you're feeling is nerves, not fear. When I go to a restaurant and I order a very expensive meal and I have $100 in my pocket, I'm nervous. I'm not fearful. I'm fearful when I go to the restaurant and I have no money in my pocket and I order a big dinner. I don't have the capability of paying anything. He said, you have the $100. He said, you see, you have the capability. Tonight, you will do your best. It may not be enough. But you will not embarrass yourself. He said, you have the ability. And then the little girl looked at him, dried her tears, put on her makeup, went out to the rink, and became the champion of the world. So falls beget falls. Let's hope we see none of them tonight. On the ice now, live at the championship, Charlene Wong. Jim, Charlene Wong is coached by the same Canadian coaches that work with Elizabeth Manley. She is not in as good position. She is 18th in figures, 14th in the short program, and now 17th coming into this portion of the competition. Manley, her, her co-worker, so to speak, is in third place overall, but this girl is skating very nicely so far. Getting a taste of the competition here. This one of the early skaters. triple jumps here that she did quite unusually she did she fulfilled the jump she did not fall down on it but she had a three turn at the end of it in other words she completed the revolution on the ice that was something that was quite usual 30 years ago but you very seldom see it today and you seldom see it in a, in a triple jump
sets the difference between a competent skater like this, second in her own national championship, and the marvelous skating you'll be seeing from the best. And now we'll take a break and come back to the championship. Well, the marks for Charlene Wong for a technical merit, 4-8 to 5-1, for artistic impression, 4-8 to 5-3. And now on the ice, Ivan Gomez of Spain. 18th overall, coming to the free skating performance. Remember, Jim, Jim, she is the skater who comes from San Francisco, but right. because of her dual citizenship, she's able to skate for, for Spain. One other thing, she is a very special friend of Brian Boitano's, and she can retain, she stayed as a competitor this year in order to support him through the Olympics and through the training period. Crowd enjoying this skating and settling into their seats, anticipating the great confrontation that's coming up between Debbie Thomas and Katarina Vick. But this is Yvonne Gomez. She's a very pretty girl, very nice style, has a little oh, trouble with her jumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what an opening. That was beautifully landed, too, until that last. Will a fall be get a fall is appeared to be the case very often in that piece on the impact of fall. Well, she definitely has to block it out of her mind and go ahead and do more of these jumps. Easy for us to say. <laughs> from San Francisco. Her connection with Spain is not really too distant. Her parents are both from Bilbao on the northern coast. She spends her summers in Spain, speaks the language fluently. One of my favorite pieces of music from Rodrigo is actually the same music that Karen Kadevi was going to be skating to. A lot of Spanish flavor in the music this year. position in the studio but of course Dick Button and Peggy Fleming are on the spot in the settlement and incidentally Jim she's a straight A student and the only other pupil of Linda Lever's besides Brian Boitano wants to be a sports psychologist right?
I think Yvonne's choice of music has been very good. It's really responsive to the audience, very easy to skate to, and her choreography has been very well planned. Unfortunately, technically, she can't keep up with it. Maybe as a psychologist, she could one day end up in the as a member of the staff in the sports medicine clinic that Debbie Thompson hopes to see. Thomas hopes to start right. after she becomes a doctor. Now that was nice that she huh? had planned a double axel at the very end, went right through with it, went ahead and attacked it, and that was nice, despite the falls and the, and the uh, left out jumps in the earlier part of the program. Very attractive girl. Mm -hmm. Yvonne Gomez. I also suspect you'll see Brian Boitano somewhere. Clyte. Uh, close up beside the edge of the ring. <laughs> the Spaniard from San Francisco. We will be back in just a minute. Is with her coach Linda Lever. Um, we can't quite see her. She's sitting to her left. 4.8, 4.7, 4.8. And there's her second set of marks for artistic impression. 4.3. That's the low from the Canadian judge. To a 4.8. To a fine performance here tonight. To music from the same opera. They're both going to skate to music from Carmen. Uh, I don't remember anything like that exactly happening before, but it's a subject worth exploring. Why don't we do that right now? It's the story of a seductive and defiant charmer who loves men only until they love her. Then she throws them away. One day, a rejected suitor kills her, and the story ends. Are Debbie and Cotty like Carmen? Well, yes and no. Katarina and Debbie share some of Carmen's qualities. Charm, wit, aggressiveness, confidence. Both start their programs at the same place in the music. But from there on, the programs go their separate ways. Very different, as the personalities of the two young women are very different. We see a new Debbie this season, a more graceful artistic one, partly due to instruction by ballet dancer George de la Peña and to a private session with the great Mikhail Baryshnikov himself. He mainly helped me just because he was there. But, you know, just the fact of the Barishnikov, you know, you get inspired and you get excited about it. And uh, he's the one that, I, that suggested I work with George. And George just makes me feel things that I just never thought I could feel before. Carmen was an ex is, you know, mythologically, an extremely bawdy woman. I mean, she's sort of the... Um, no holds barred, uh, no limits, outrageous, kind of um, loaded with the joy of life. So I'd say to her, yeah, I really enjoy it. Each of these two young women decided independently to skate to the music of Carmen. Katarina told us how she sees the character. I really like the Carmen music and the story of this woman, that she lost one man and she's together with another man. Um, but I can't do this on the ice yet. <laughs> Debbie the athlete, Debbie who once described herself in a single word as invincible, is still very much a part of the new Debbie. Her Carmen ends not with a whimper, but with a pose that seems to shout, I'm a winner. Katarina cues more closely to the storyline. Her Carmen dies like a wilted flower, melting into the ice in one final tragic moment. two Carmen's, and only one can win the goal. Or to the skaters to their coaches sometimes. Remember Debbie Thomas and her coach Alex McGowan after her marks in the short program the other night. There were the marks. Technical merit, quite good. But in the marks for presentation, Debbie was unhappy, but coach Alex McGowan was absolutely disgusted, as you could see. But how do the judges turn those marks into placement? Six Button explains. 
This is what a judge's scoring sheet looks like. After the first skater, the judge fills in the marks. First, he gives a basic mark for the overall technical quality of the moves, and then he deducts for errors, and thereby arrives at the technical merit mark. Then he gives the artistic impression and totals the two marks. 6-0 is a perfect mark. The skater with the highest total gets a first place, known as an ordinal, and so on down the line. Now, skater number two and number three have the same total. When there is a tie in the totals, the higher technical merit mark breaks the tie. It is possible for a judge to give the same marks for technical merit and artistic impression. That judge then ties the skater. Remember, it's how a judge ranks the skaters from the totals that counts, not one judge's marks compared to the other judges as we've seen them. It's okay to be high or low as long as you're consistent. Trouble occurs with inconsistency. And the scores, of course, are the products of the judges. And we wondered who these people are, how they get there, and that sort of thing. Why don't we consider that subject as we move along toward that confrontation tonight? Here are the second set of marks. These that you can see are five nines, five eights, but except for judge number seven, which is a five five. That judge is just being questioned by the man in the center with the president of the United States Figure Skating Association. Now, we've seen these conferences many times through the years. And who are these people? Where do they come from? Do they know what they're doing? Why do they have conferences? How do they learn their job? Well, many of them are former skaters, others just people who love the sport and want to be involved. They have the same ambition as a man who wants to be a baseball umpire or a football referee. They begin as trial judges, like the young people you see here. They judge competitions, but their marks don't count. Their marks are, however, compared with those of the official trial judges. Just as skaters climb up from the competitive ladder, so do the judges, from the local, novice, to the national senior level. Review committees evaluate their records and promote those considered qualified to the next level. It can take thousands of hours volunteered over 8 to 12 years to become a World or Olympic judge. They also have to pass an exam and attend a judges' school run by the International Skating Union, which is the governing body of the sport. These system of having these schools and to have these examinations is just trying to uh, overcome the ignorance or the incompetence of the judges. Which can be a problem, particularly with judges from countries that just don't know very much about skating. We're now trying to make sure that people from all countries are looking at things from the same perspective. Even after reaching the world level, judges are required to participate in these schools to keep up with the latest developments in the sport. Usually we only see four or five skaters on TV, but there may be as many as 25 of them competing. You become almost scary-eyed. You watch so many programs. Now, each judge has to keep track of every spin, every jump, and how well it's performed by every skater. So they have a sheet with columns for each element. However, you can't look away for too long while you're taking those notes. It's a problem. When a competition is over, the judges will not be able to just turn in their marks and go home. They'll all meet with the referee and discuss the scoring. If they're questioned, well, those notes will be very important. If you have had a deviation, you must be prepared to defend your position. Yes, the judges know. Of course they know that we check their activity very uh, seriously, and if they are if there are very important deviations or evident national bias, there will be sanctions. The penalties vary in a range depending on the violation. And Alexander Fadea, the world champion at the time, touched down on three jumps and then fell outright on two others in the 1986 World Championships. The Soviet judge still gave him a 5-9 on the left there for technical merit. It was so obviously above the range of displays with national bias that the Soviets themselves suspended their own judge even before the skating union could. The greatest penalty that a judge can receive is for national bias. So we're attempting to not show national bias for our skaters. Is that hard to do? And I find it extremely hard to do. While the questioning, which usually goes on behind closed doors, provides a system of checks and balances, it can also be very intimidating to the judges. Oh, I certainly think there, there, there is some fear involved uh, as to what will be said afterwards. And um, I, I do think that in some cases, um, judges may bend to judging um, in order to stay in line. And this, of course, I disapprove of. I will have no part of that. Apparently, some judges have gone a lot farther than just allowing national bias to show through. 
According to Barbara Jean Lane, there are occasions when a judge will offer to make a deal with a judge from another country. I can only speak for myself. Um, there are two occasions. Uh, one at uh, a world championship and one at an international championship where I was certainly approached. Um, it, it was no problem as far as I was concerned to deal with. I simply indicated to the people that were concerned that I was not interested. They wished me to boost one of their skaters and in turn they would do the same. Uh, this is basically what goes on it is a case of promoting a skater from another country. I think that perhaps these deals tend to involve skaters who are coming up the ladder. Um, I think the best skater for the most part wins the championship. Well, Sonia Bianchetti of the International Skating Union declined to talk to us on that subject. Well, there are the judges for tonight. Dick and Peggy are in the arena. And I would say this, Dick, one thing I know, I wouldn't want to be one of them tonight. Well, I'll tell you, Jim, those judges simply have to come up with a decision. But there's a difference between who is going to win and who is going to be a great skater. I've always felt that a great skater is someone who not only reaches the top, but leaves the sport different and better because he or she was in it. We've seen many instances of that in the past. And tonight, when all the sequins have settled, the triple jumps have been landed, and the applause has died down, will we have seen skating that clearly advances the art of figure skating? Someone who did advance the art in her time was my friend Peggy Fleming. My special moment in that situation was the 1960s. National Championships at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. You were lovely. I remember it That's very well. I skated my best. Now, what about this special moment tonight, from your uh, point of view? I think the judges have a very tough decision tonight. And both of the skaters, both of it and Thomas, are outstanding skaters. And they've improved over the past few years, both technically and artistically. You know, Katarina will always be remembered for her, her glamour and her strength that she brought to our sport. And Debbie, when we first saw her, was very athletic, powerful, and fearless. And now she's refined her style to, to give us a, a more overall performance that is both technically strong and much more elegant. So it's, it's going to be uh, very interesting as, as to what happens this evening. Do you wish you were out there? No way. <laughs> Let's watch. It's going to be an extraordinary event. Jim? Okay, well, there are the standings coming to this final phase. It won't be long now. Your skater, so she was 10th after that, moved up to 8th after the short program, but you'll really see some jumps and spins from her, and as I say, she's a very appealing person. We have an up-close and personal order. I would like to suggest that all American TJ teenagers pay close attention. <laughs> This is where Midori Ito's day begins at 6 a.m. She got up at 5, and now it's time to practice compulsory figures. Not everyone's idea of a swinging good time at any hour. But figures are her weakness, so the practice is intense. But at 7.30, a quick change of clothes and pace. It's time to go to school. Now, Tokai High isn't your basic American high school. First, it's for girls only. Second, they all wear uniforms. Third, they all attend mid-morning assembly for inspirational speeches and prayers. Fourth, and most different, they don't walk to class, they run. Three o'clock in the afternoon, school's over, and Midori takes just a minute to feed the pigeons before continuing her totally structured day by stopping off at a Buddhist shrine. It's time now for prayer and reflection. Midori goes through the ritual as her ancestors did centuries ago. But Midori's ancestors didn't have a four-hour practice session in the late afternoon. Spins and jumps repeated over and over successfully. It ends 14 hours after it began. The skating, that is, not the day. Midori shares one problem with millions of American kids. Her parents are divorced. For four years, she has lived with her coach's family. After dinner, it's the music room, always listening with skating in mind. Who knows, maybe this particular piece of music or the next one might fit into a free skating program. After music, it's homework, and after that, bed. Nothing to do but sleep for exactly six hours. Midori Ito, that's the kind of a day she has, kids. And it pays off by being here in the Olympics. We'll be seeing her very shortly in her performance. 
Anna Kondrashova, Joanne Conway, Zimona Koch, and Midori Ito. In that order, Dick, uh, during commercial, you said it's been a very exciting warm-up here. Well, I find the, the, the warm-up is always is some of the best part of the skating because you can really tell where a person is going and how they're moving it. Are they being extremely conservative? Are they being, uh, you know, are they letting it all out? Are they having trouble? Um, how about Midori? Oh, she, well, she's just solid all the way through everything. She has such a bubbly personality. That smile lit up this building during the short program. It was a joy to see. <laughs> She'll be in this group that's about to skate now. Full house, almost 20,000 people gathered in the Saddle Dome. And you know, Dick and Peggy, we've been talking about this confrontation coming up for more than a year. It almost seems like forever. It's hard to believe that it's here right tonight. Yep. Claudia Leisner right now, 22 years old from Ludwigshafen, West Germany. Seventh overall. I think one of the problems she has is that the music itself is a potpourri, an, an incredible medley. But she has a, a big love for American music, so with all American music, you'll be familiar with it. Championships, but since then, it just hasn't happened, has it? She is essentially not the most powerful or dynamic or fast free skater, and that's always held her back. She is really a very shy girl when it comes to skating out here on the ice and projecting to the audience. But when she's off the ice, she's just like everyone else. She's very shy. Doesn't 
Long and lean and yes. wonderful for doing the triple jump. Well, she's five foot seven. That's a big girl for skating. Well, she was a good high she jumper. She did a real nice job. Good high jumper in junior high school. Probably up to Claudia Leisner. Backstage, Katarina Witt with Tracy Wilson, who with her partner won a bronze medal in ice dancing for Canada. We'll be right back. Leah Leisner, quite good, 5'4 to 5'7. Perfect mark, of course, is 6.0. Coach Andre Nepola there was a three-time world champion representing Czechoslovakia. Statistic impression? 5'2 to 5'6. 5.5. 5.6. Certainly a little, gener a little generous when con one five considers four, who has yet to skate. Five five. That's true. Thanks and now here's five. another West German skater, Thanks Marina Thielman from five. Dortmund. Thanks 11th overall as she comes to this Thanks performance, five. as you see. And she five. has five. elected also to Thanks skate to Carmen tonight. Thanks uh, five. I think that Thanks means five. she's sort of skating Thanks in the fast five. lane here. Yeah. Well, it's such skatable music. It's, people have used this over the years quite a lot. But you're really asking for comparison mm -hmm. when, you, when you do that. Well, this young woman surprised herself by placing second in her national championships in Germany. It was only decided on the last day that she'd come to Calgary. <laughs> Opening incidentally was the same as both Wit and Thomas do at the opening of their comet of their Carmen. At the exact same place in the music too. perfect example of the entrance to the jump. She, that jump was doomed from the step that led into it. 90% of the time, a bad jump is caused by the entrance. on roller skates in the summertime, I would, I would assume partly because of the fact that ice rink skills aren't as available in Europe as they are in the United States or Canada. Whoa! Between 
what we're seeing now and what we'll see later is that the later skaters are strong, powerful skaters. They move over the ice with surety and speed. And this girl uh, is not. at the end, just like Katarina is going to be doing later. Marina Kielman, 20-year-old skater from Dortmund, West Germany. And there is Debbie Thomas backstage. With that, by the way, is the team, is the team <laughs> doctor, Dr. Howard Philby. I think he's <laughs> enjoying all of this. Okay, well, we'll be back after this word from your local stations. of the Soviet Union, the march from Marina Kielman, the young woman who surprised herself by even being here. We're not so bad, 5-0 to 5-3 for technical merit. Artistic impression, they were all 5-0 to 5-3, except for a 4-7 from the American judge. Uh, Pandrosheva here is ninth overall, coming to the free skating. She was fifth four years ago at Sarajevo in the Olympics. triple jump, not very consistent. And there is already a signal of that, that two-foot landing. Oh, but it's the way she carries her body when she skates. You'll, you'll enjoy this no matter if she makes the jumps or not. Beautiful arm positions and upper body carriage. these isolation moves. This is where her dance ability really comes out.
very pretty. Anna Kondrasheva of the Soviet Union. And there's Elizabeth Manley of Canada. Is she headed for a bronze medal? Well, that's her placing right now. A big night for her, for sure. The technical merit mark for Anna Kondrasheva of the Soviet Union, 5-0 to 5-6. 5 Next, the mark for artistic impression, and there they are. 5-4 from the Swiss judge, up to a 5-7 from three other judges. I think it's a little hard to understand the 5.7 from the Soviet Union with the number of mistakes that were made in the program. But Joanne, again, that's the subject of judging, isn't it? Yep. Joanne Conway, Great Britain, had a terrible time in the short program. She was eighth after the compulsory, but finished 18th in the short program to place 12th overall coming to this. Student of Carlo Fossi has coached so many great female skaters. A week ago, she suffered a very, very serious injury to, her, uh, to the back of her leg. The doctor said, three weeks, no skating. She said, I'll give you three days. <laughs> but she is enjoyable to watch. She hits some beautiful moves. The choreography is very well done. Choreographed by Sandra Bezik, the same choreography choreographer that uh, did Brian Boitano's program so successfully. Eliminated the third and then fell. And, um, and that's only in the first two minutes. The injury could be bothering her. She looks almost heavy legged out there. The injury was to the back of her leg. Mm -hmm. She plans to skate until 1992 Olympics, and maybe after that, try some modeling. She's so cute.
Joanne Conway, a native of Walls End, England. Still the crowd waits for the big confrontation. We'll have her marks in a minute. And Conway, she knew she didn't skate well with her coach, Carlo Fossi. First set, technical merit, 4-5 to 5-1. Another set to come. 4-6 from Great Britain, from her own country, which is the lowest mark, by the way. And a 5-0, the high mark. That's sort of a reverse nationalism. Yes, that's right. Yes, there's Simona Koch standing by from... German Democratic Republic, that's East Germany. Republic. And that's her coach right there, Heidi Marie Steiner Walter. Tenth overall from Dresden. This costume as it is, her music will be to Swan Lake. She's a lovely skater. She has beautiful body lines. <laughs> Interesting to look forward that the final group now will contain only five skaters with the stretch of Karen Cavalli. Katarina Vick will skate early. Debbie Thomas will skate last. Take a remarkable number of falls. From here on, though, nothing but outstanding free skating. Midori Ito will be next from Japan. Then, all the leaders. I think her program was filled with wonderful choreography. She just really lacks that command of the audience and and really the command of herself out here, the confidence. And 
again, the crowds here in Calgary have been so kind. If you're wonderful, they applaud for that. If you have tough luck out there, they encourage you with their applause. Simona Koch of East Germany. Backstage, Jill Trenery. She'll be first to skate in the final group. Before her, though, Midori Ito. So stand by. It's coming. There's Katarina Vuk, still loosening up. She was working on her hands and wrists the last time we watched her. Now it's her arms and shoulders. Second set of marks here. 5.0 to 5.4. Say Zimona Koch. We'll try again next week. Midori Ito, now she's 18, we met her up close and personal a little while ago. It was absolutely delightful in the short program, and we would expect that again tonight. And, and look at the smile already he had just a minute ago. Remember one thing, the opening of this program is slow, but after that, it goes forever, and it never stops. Jim, this program is a triumph of athleticism. Five feet tall, 98 pounds. Full of talent. If sport and art are going to do battle in figure skating, in this program, athletics will win. I think she has such a, a wonderful charisma with this audience. She looks like, you know, she's just loving every moment out here. figures from international competition should succeed and some think it might she would leap upward in the standings because the school figures are what have her down in eighth place overall she you was must... actually fourth in the short program jim you simply must recognize this is an athletic program the first thing judged is for is for and look at that move that was a flying system not seen in this competition by anybody else Oh. 
program just stated so well. Wave it proudly. <laughs> look, at, look at her on the ice. She was just, a, just terrific. <laughs> Down on her knees. The and people are hands. standing all the way up in the top, top row. This is great. <laughs> and she's only 18 years old. Four years from now in Albertville, France. Hmm. Oh, now look at this, of that triple lutz. Look at the height. Now look at the height. I mean, the stretched right leg, the left leg wrapping around and coming out in plenty of time. And the mouth, look, she knows she's landed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, great fun, great fun. And now the five lead skaters do remain to skate. They've got to leave room on top of her mark to let C for technical merit. They're coming up. Look at this. There they are. Have a look. I mean, we've got Vic yet to come, Thomas yet to come, Trenary, Elizabeth Manley, and there you have your 5'8 and 5'9, and I think that's even better than she had hoped and prayed for at the Buddhist shrine every afternoon after school. You simply must understand that the first thing that is judged in figure skating today is speed and force. And that this little girl has more than enough of. Artistic impression, that would be down a bit, as you indicated, Dick. It's an athletic program, 5'5". Five, five. The five seven, five, not five, bad six. at all. Five, uh, you know, she she has five, the potential five, for being a far five, more five, artistic seven, skater five, and creative five, skater than five, she is six. right now. I think that five, will come in time. Five, she does a little bunny hop. <laughs> and now the final group moves out for a warm up. over the public address system that Karen Kadavy has been scratched, will not be competing tonight because of the high temperature and the flu. Here, Katarina Vitt, defending Olympic champion, current world champion. She says this year is it for her. She's going to retire and become an actress. I think she's an actress already. For Carmen. I think you're right. <laughs> and here, Debbie Thomas, 20 years old. Katarina is 22. Debbie will be returning to Stanford University next year to continue her pre-med study. So this is the night Coach Alex McGowan looks on as we meet Debbie up close and personal. It was some juggling act that Debbie Thomas tried Skates and studies all at once. World-class skating and pre-med studies. It was too much. She did it for two years, studying at Stanford, training at a dreary little rink in Redwood City. The pressure kept building. She picked up and moved to Boulder, Colorado. She skates there, but she's also taking a few classes at the University of Colorado. Not specifically pre-med and not as pressure-packed. They concern sports medicine, something she hopes to combine with a career as an orthopedic surgeon. Debbie is introspective. She isn't totally pleased with Debbie Thomas. She admits that and tries to work on herself. I can be such a great kid sometimes, and I can be really awful, too. And people don't know that. People are, oh, Debbie, she's so nice, and she's so wonderful, and she's great. But they've never seen me when I'm just really awful to deal with. I can be really a pain in the neck. I don't know what it is, but as soon as it hit Olympic year, all of a sudden I wanted everything to be perfect immediately. And even though things are getting better, I still have days where I just cannot handle anything. 
And when I start thinking about me actually being out on the ice doing my program at the Olympics, it really scares me. And I just have to overcome that and just go out and perform. I know the fear is going to be there, the nerves will be there, and you just have to deal with it. And luckily in the past, I've been able to deal with pressure really well. I've enjoyed my skating career and I love skating, you know, and it'll always be a part of my life, but I just know that this is the end of my amateur career. We're talking to Coach Alex McGowan. Peggy, any thoughts on Debbie as she prepares? Well, I think she's trying to concentrate on exactly the job that she has to do tonight. But you know, there's something interesting that's been happening here. The girls, the other day before the short, pro short program, were all disaster and skated brilliantly. Today, they were kind of perfect. Tonight, we're beginning to see in this warm-up a l cup of clutches, a cup of glitches. And there's Katarina. She is such a doll out there. She has been solid as a rock this past uh, few weeks here in, in Calgary. Understand and I know she's, she's extremely nervous, too. That's what we heard after practice today, that she was pretty nervous. Well, who wouldn't be? <laughs> it's, it's called olympic -itis. And still with a chance for a bronze medal here, Jill Trenery of the United States. She'd have to catch Elizabeth Manley of Canada. There you see, she was fifth in the figures, the short program. Six, but she's fifth overall. She has a real competitive spirit in her, and she is, is a very powerful, very good all-around skater. And Liz Manley right there doing it. One of the triple loops that she does. She's one of the few girls, along with Midori Ito, that does that particular jump. A particularly um, excruciatingly hard jump to do. Now remember that Thomas is the leader. Vitt is second. But this counts for 50% of the total mark. Whichever of the two wins this free skating phase will win the gold medal. Are they aware of each other out there? Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> They're aware not only of each other, but of all the other skaters and the, the audience and the judges. It's a high pressure moment. Debbie Thomas's coach, Alex McGowan, has never had a skater of this caliber. Her career has been very, very important to him. This is just as big a night for him, whereas Vitt's coach, Jutta Muller, has had champions before, including her own daughter, Gabby Seifert. U Uta Muller is probably one of the world's great coaches. Back in the old days of skating, maybe as many as 30, 40 years ago, teachers like Gustav Lucy had incredible numbers of skaters, one after the other. Today, it is a far more fractured world. She first came to the World Championship. That was Katarina in 1980. Here's Debbie again. Last Olympics, Debbie was only, I think, fifth in the United States Championship. Wasn't even there. She won't be there four years from now. Here's the skating mother. Jill Curry leading it off to the United States. Then Katarina, Manly of Canada, even over the Soviet Union, who's dropping down. She's a school figure specialist. And finally, Debbie Thomas. Here is Jill Curry. complete skater. She finishes off every move she does. With the hand positions and leg. Very nice. And something to watch for in the jumps that she does. She keeps her toes in a pointed position and, and very much together. Very pretty jumper. intended to be a triple jump. She elected to do a double, but the lack of content, I think, might hurt her. I love this combination of one-foot axle into a triple sow cow. Oh, but she does that so well. 
She is truly elegant. She really is. Her choreography was also done by Sandra Bessick. Sandra's a Canadian. You know, Jim, that was a beautiful program. She has elegance and style. There's a bag. But the content was not there. On many of the jumps, she took off the... She just reduced the numbers of rotations. I think the judges saw that. Here is one of her opening moves, the flip jump. One, two, it's a double jump. Uh, as we saw and there were several other triples that she had prepared that were reduced to doubles it did not destroy our enjoyment of the show but it certainly uh, will hurt her on her technical merit mark and this yeah. is her father i think he's not too happy because he he recognizes the difference and i think she did this does too and by marks for jill she doesn't look happy either but you know the beauty of this program was right there and that is certainly something that has got to be remembered it isn't just a triple jump competition unfortunately all of us forget that too too often the ever-present carlo fossi not looking overjoyed no he's had some bad luck so far tonight uh -huh. next to come will be katarina there she is Five point six, five point first set of marks. Five point four, five point seven. Five point seven, five point six. Nowhere near as good as little Midori Ito, for example. No, they're certainly in, in, in consideration of what some of the other skaters got. I think they're they're too low. But high point seven. And lowness is the question that we've been talking about all week. That's consistency. Artistic compression will be next. Jill's just 19. She could well be there four years from now. Five sixes, five sevens, a five eight from Great Britain. Down to you, Peggy. Jill, you seem to have a little.
little trouble uh, with your triple jumps. You were seemed to hold back. What what happened? Well, you know, I started off with the first one, and I think I didn't have enough speed, and it's just getting to the point where it's a mental game, and it's really frustrating. But as far as the last one, I was tired, and. Um, you know, working too. So I thought I held on with the rest pretty good, but it was not as my great best time. Well, you're a lovely skater. Good luck in the future. Well, Jill has taken the lead of those who have skated just ahead of Midori Ito, but here comes the champ. Katarina defending her title. No woman has ever done that since Sonia Henney. And I think that the Carmen we are going to see is a flirtatious one. This is a section of the program where she really draws the audience in and uses her acting ability. But not her skating ability. This is a posing section. Well, this Carmen nice. seems to fall when the poses occur. the content that you would expect Debbie's will have? Absolutely. Well, it does in a different way. I think she has the same content, but right in here, a minute and 16 seconds will go by where she hasn't done any difficult jumps or any difficult spins, so it's giving her a second wind. She really gets a chance to really act out and draw that audience in. triple jump she elected to do a double it's that jump that she's had problems with that will not detract from her mark
the poses, the shading, the dramatic drama that really wonderful. Alberto Tomba, the admirer of Katarina Vick. Remember, he said this afternoon after winning his second gold medal, if Katarina does not win tonight, I'll give her one of my gold medals. <laughs> she certainly is a beautiful, beautiful lady, isn't she? Gorgeous. And if, if one is talking about technical jumps in this competition, I think one has to note that she did four triple jumps not the usual number that I think she is capable of. Look at this combination. First, the triple toe. Look at the height on it. That is exquisite. And then a double toe. That is exquisite. I frankly don't know how much impression the judges will give to the actual mark of technique and difficult technicality in this program. I think they'll go more for what we're seeing right now. All right, now the technical merit will be the first mark we'll see as Yuta Muller again, extremely attentive to her skater at all times. Indeed, they did. More like a mother than a coach. Look at those marks, Jim. Indeed, they did reflect the fact yep. that her technique was down. Five, six to five, eight. That, that shows the technical, um, the, the, the triple jump mania that we have here. But I think you'll see a room over that. But plenty of room for technical merit over that. Yeah, here, 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 that, here that. Yeah. I think those two marks there are five eight will show you the only two judges that are in the wit the Thomas camp. Let's go down to Peggy quickly. Did you skate as well as you wanted to? Well, I skate well, I think so. Are you going to be watching Debbie? Yes, of course. Well, we've enjoyed your skating over all these years. I know you've got a lot of fans in America and Canada. Good luck. And now the roar goes for the homegrown product, Elizabeth Manley of Canada, who's had so many tough times in her life, personally, emotionally, put on a tremendous amount of weight one time, has fallen in important competitions, this is the big night. She could win a bronze medal.
makes one of those required moves to serpentine step. She is fleet fast in a dynamo. She has missed key jumps. She is so solid tonight. Well, she also works with a sports psychologist, Peter Jensen, that worked with Brian Orser. Seems to be working for her. What a great night for her. What a wonderful thing, the home country. He did it! Ah, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> A look of wonder. You know, she's been working on skating for the joy of it. And did it show. There's her mother. At one point, she had moved away from her mother. That was when she was having as little Cordy Ava. She hasn't missed a minute of any skating competition since she won the pairs. Wouldn't it be great if every human being could have one moment like this once in their lives? <laughs> a Calgary hat. Well, Liz went and got him, all right. And there she is with her coach, Sonia Clark for Dunfield, a U.S. champion from the early 50s, and her coach, Peter Dunfield. <laughs> oh, nice. Right on, Liz. <laughs> Look at this triple us. Watch the toe pick. Now watch the height that she gets. The tight wrap around the revolution. Look at the stretch and the tightness of the leg. Very, very beautiful. Fabulous performance. Truly the performance of a lifetime. And this right at the end of her program, her very last double axle. That's the one that you really have to grit your teeth on and not care a hoot about. <laughs> Yeah. Who, said, who said figure skating was a quiet sport? There's Debbie. She still has to wait. She's the last to skate. Look at this. From five, seven to five, nine. Wow. <laughs> Still to come before Debbie is even over. The Soviet. Look at these for artistic impression. Five seven to five nine. Now puts her in a strong second place at the moment behind Katarina. Here we go, Peggy. That, that was fantastic. You knew you had to give a great performance, and you did. How did you overcome all the pressure? Um, yeah, I haven't felt a lot of pressure here. It's the kind of the Debbie and the Katarina story here. And I've been off on my own. And I've been so prepared for this competition. And I, I knew I was going to do it. I just had that inner feeling. I've been having dreams of this night. And I'm so happy. And we're all very happy for you. Congratulations. Back to you, Jim. A great night of Elizabeth Manley. She even had an ABC pin on her hat. I noticed that. Now, Kira Ivanova. Now, the United States came here with a strong team. They'd hoped for two medals from Debbie Thomas, Jill Trenary, and Karen Kadavy. Kadavy had a scratch tonight because of illness, and now Manley is definitely ahead of Trenary. So it will be one medal at the most for the United States. Even over the school figure specialist, dropped down to fourth on the short program.
seeing Dick and Peggy. They're on tonight's free skating performance. So far, Elizabeth Manley has had six first place votes. Katarina Witt had two. Oh, well, the I, door looks like it's opening, I think. I think there's a very interesting story developing in those marks because those first place positions are going to affect this whole system when it's finished. Yep. I think we might see some something quite different. She's been at world level competition for eight years. A lot of experience. One after the other of these of these difficult jumps are just falling apart on this uh, poor gal. But this has been the history of her skating. Well, I think along with the lack of the jumps, I think the choreography really lacks interest. I think from one jump to the next. If there is choreography, you can't see it. Yeah, that's right. Ivanova, Soviet Union. He has dreamed about her, he has talked about her, and now Alberto Camba has finally met Katarina Vitt. Carlo Fossi, the coach, is translating from the Italian. We'll be back for Debbie. Technical merit mark for Kira Ivanova, 4.5, the American judge to a 5.4, and the Soviet, the East German, and the Japanese judge. She may drop down another place, and still Debbie waits. You know, there's something very interesting about the marking. It's really quite, uh, quite strange because I see five first places for Manley, but she's still in second place. She has six, I believe, six, and two for this. That's for, that's for free skating tonight. I see. Well, my monitor is not quite clear on that. That's okay. But there's an awful lot of first places in Manley's, can in Manley's card at this point. Your moment, do it. That's what he said. Even over, by the way, it dropped all the way down to six. So this is it. 
It's time to compare Carmen's. Conservatively, she had a slight sort of hold in the warm-up period. for Debbie, Debbie Thomas. Not her best moment. Perhaps the only skaters who skated to the utmost of their ability tonight were Mabari Ito and Elizabeth Manley. She knows it. However, uh, and you know, it's really going to be interesting to see how the marks come out. She could even lose the silver medal here. This was the first move right here. The triple toe loop right there. 
She landed it, went up into the second one. And by the way, that's an extremely difficult combination, two triple jumps. And it's harder than anything that uh, Katerina Vitt Bit had been done. Her mother not happy, obviously. After all those years, the days of driving 150 miles to drive Debbie to practice. Did you hear that? Well, back to school, she said. This is going to be very tight. It could be. She just found out that she's won the silver medal in the Olympic Games. There's Johnny Esau, an old friend of ours for CTV, the Canadian Network. Silver medal, what a performance for her. What a great night for Elizabeth Manley. Night of disappointment for Debbie Thomas because there'll be no more Olympics for her. She has other things to do. Now the carpet's being rolled out for the awards, but it's Katarina Vitt, the gold medalist for the second time in a row, then Manley, and then Thomas. Certainly, as far as I am concerned, I'm reminded that the International Skating Union calls this the ladies' event. These ladies, when they do those triple jumps, are sleek, tough, and very competitive. But you know something, no matter whether we call them the new style of triple jump ladies, or whether we call them the old style, or whether we call them ladies or women, it doesn't seem to matter. They're wonderful athletically, and when they give it to us, they're truly enchanting. And even when they're not so good, they're still wonderful. Well, it is such tough pressure, and we all felt so bad for, for Debbie. We all wanted her to do so well. She really rallied on the, the short program, but the long program is, there was just tremendous pressure in it. It's hard. It's very difficult. And wasn't it exciting for Elizabeth Manley? What a yeah. moment when a young lady like that finally puts the act together, and it's this moment that she does it in. Yes. She did it because she said she got back to the original thing that skating is all about. She said, I did it for enjoyment. Yes. I wanted to skate. I loved to skate. I did it for enjoyment. And that's the name of the game in figure skating. Well, there is Elizabeth. It's the first time in five years that Katarina Vitt has lost the free skating phase of a performance. She lost it to Liz Manley tonight. Of course, Vitt the overall winner, Manly the silver medal. There's the winner. Um, can Alberto Tomba be far behind? Watching this competition as avidly as if it were the U.S. Open Golf Championship has been my colleague Jack Whittaker. Some thoughts, Jack? Well, we're all a little limp, Jim, as I'm sure you are. There was nervous energy hanging around here tonight before this challenge of the Carmens began and it was sitting in the aisles like an obese dinner guest that wouldn't go home. It's ebbing out of here now and it's left us all a little limp. 
You know how bizarre it was? For the first time in living memory before tonight, there was sympathy for figure skating judges. Try that one on for size. <laughs> and finally, we got to the competition, and Katarina Vitt, I guess, is the glamour girl from the unglamorous country. The consummate flirt who can work a room as good as any Las Vegas performer, and she did it here tonight. And for Debbie, well, I'll tell you, if that's what young Americans are like today, I'm not worried a bit. And when she gets her degree, I hope she'll be my family doctor. I also hope that uh, Alberto Tombo might sweep Katarina off her feet and bring her back here to the West so we can enjoy her beauty and talent. It was a great night for figure skating, a great night for Canada, and as a matter of fact, Jim, a heck of a night for Bizet. Not bad for the old Mr. B. You're absolutely right. So... Let's take a break here. It has indeed be rather a draining night, but we're going to stay for the medal ceremony. Back in the saddle dome again as the crowd waits for the official announcement. Most of them don't really know who won so far. Uh, they're waiting for the official results. And now let's go down to Peggy Fleming. She has Liz Manley with her now. Peggy. Elizabeth, you were just fantastic. The audience just loved you. Did they have something to do with you doing so well tonight, this encouragement? It was just incredible out there. I was determined, though, not to think of the audience. And uh, when I went out there, after that triple lutz, I couldn't help but think of the audience. That's all it took was to land that triple lutz, and I felt home free. And But I was so focused. I was really thinking from time to the start to the time I finished. Do you think you can put this all in perspective? I really do. Um, I have two weeks to come down and off this major cloud, <laughs> and I'm, I think I'll be okay for Worlds in two weeks. I feel the best I've ever felt, the best trained I've ever felt. Is this the best performance you've ever given in your life? Oh, this was really close to Geneva. Geneva was really my best, but they're giving you a wave. <laughs> um, this was probably my best. What a place to do it. Oh, we're so proud of you. We're really happy for you. Back to you, Jim. All right, Elizabeth Manley, look at this, Karen Kababy, still with the temperature, I don't know whether you hear us, Karen, but there's going to be another day, it's going to be a world championship, and there's going to be another Olympics four years from now. You all know how the flu feels, don't you? Now back here, where the excitement continues, Elizabeth Manley, I was saying, our, our man Al Michaels there, and Linda, yeah, and then look at the... Proceedings that Millie is doing. Elizabeth Manley has really put her skating and her life back together. We are proud to present the victors in the figure skating event. It's on the tournament. Remember, most of the crowd waiting to see how it turned out. You know. We know. Juan Antonio Samaran, the president of the International Olympic Committee, coming out behind a ceremonial mountain. One of the great uniforms in the world, isn't it? Daniel Samaran, tomorrow night, will be participating in the closing ceremony, which will be seen live. There it is. Ceremony tomorrow night will be the great extended ice show. Many great champions of the past. The gold medalist in the ladies' event, La Medaille d'Or, from the German Democratic Republic, de la Republic Démocratique d'Allemagne, Katharina Witt. And now they know.
Her name goes down in the book with only that of Sonia Henry. Sonia participated in her first Ladies Olympics when she was 11, and she started last. Next two Olympics she won, 24 and 28. There's the silver medal for Elizabeth Manley. Canada, Elizabeth Manley. And they're on their feet again. <laughs> Almost walking the on The bronze edge. medalist in the, the ladies' event, La Médaille Bronze. From the United States, Des Etats-Unis, Debbie Thomas. Well, that ovation should help a little. And a bronze medal in the Olympics isn't something you hide in the closet. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, His Excellency Juan Antonio Samaranch, President of the International Olympic Committee, Son Excellence Juan Antonio Samaranch, President du Comité International Olympique, will present the medals to the victors. Remettre les médailles au vainqueur. To be a busy man four years from now when the Summer Olympics are in his hometown of Barcelona. But now, a ceremonial function, the gold medal. And where is the next little girl she can turn into a champion? Somewhere in East Germany. How proud she must be of herself. And Debbie. That medal will look better in a few days. Alex McGowan. It was the night of his life, too. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, the flowers will now be presented by Olof Paulsen, president of the International Skating Union. Olof Paulsen, president of the Union Internationale de Patinage, a fleuri avant d'évoquer au vainqueur. After this year, it'll be a very different picture with Katarina and Betty retired from the sport of the Elizabeth Manley and Bill Trenery and Little Magori Nico and Karen Kadevi, of course, is still there. It's going to be a fascinating four years yes, building to the next women's games in Albertville, France. And share with these fine athletes their pride in their achievement. The national anthem of the German Democratic Republic, l'hymne national de la République démocratique d'Allemagne. Well, the German Democratic Republic is ninth gold medal of these games. Tomorrow, all manner of things coming up, almost 11 hours of coverage altogether. There's silver in there, and it is official, and there is Katarina and Coach Müller with the gold medal, as we said, the ninth for the German Democratic Republic in these games. Congratulations to her. What a day we have coming up tomorrow. It's the finale. See you in the morning. 12 noon Eastern, 11 Central, and 9 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. The 15th Olympic Winter Games. This is Jim McKay saying goodnight from Calgary.